let's take a look at um, the very first few things that you should know about SA Write when you get started. Um, so we'll start off by adding a tracker or other instrument, and you do that by using the Add Instrument icon right up here on the toolbar. So we click on that, and you'll see a list of all the instruments that you've previously connected to. Or if this is a new instrument to you, then you can just select the All Instruments icon and then pick it from there. So we'll just pick a 960 and then add that instrument. And now that the instrument is added to the job file, uh, in order to run the instrument through Spatial Analyzer, you just need to connect to it. So we do that using this icon, which is a running man for the run interface. So I'll select laser trackers. If your firewall restricts access, you may need to approve that. And then we'll just select the tracker that we're going to connect to. So for training purposes, I'm not going to connect to the tracker, but you'll, if you're running an actual tracker, you will obviously want to leave that checked. So then once you've um, started the tracker, you'll notice our instrument interface. And the instrument interface has basically two different looks to it. Uh, the first one here is the most popular one to use is the instrument toolbar which contains all of your most frequently used um, shortcut buttons. Uh, but if you prefer the old method, you can also switch to the standard instrument interface. And so if I click there, then you'll see this is the standard instrument interface. So if you'll notice, this, the instrument interface is a separate window from the spatial analyzer window. And in order to uh, dock that, you can just hit this button right here to dock it inside of spatial analyzer. And then you'll have your instrument interface there. And you can always use this icon to change between the instrument interface and the instrument toolbar. Just as easy as that. So once you've added the instrument, let's talk about a few of the uh, important things that you need to choose um, before you start shooting points. And to do that, I'll just use the instrument toolbar here. So there's really three main things that you need to choose before you just start shooting data. And that is the name of the point the target that you'll be shooting, and the measurement profile here. So let's look at those in a little bit more detail here right now. So first of all, if you click in this box right here, it gives you the option to set the name uh, of the point that you're gonna be taking. And uh, every target has three main points of data. That's the collection that it goes in, and the collection is over here in the tree bar. If you leave it blank, it will just go into whatever the active collection is. Next is the group. And a point group is useful for separating points out into um, individual features or objects or uh, otherwise grouping them in a way that will make sense for your an analysis later on. So you can select the group here and if you've already shot some points you'll be able to click the, um, the down arrow there and see all the groups that you have. Uh, but if you haven't you can just type in a name right there. And then you'll be able to set the target name so the group is sort of like the um, uh, the street the address and then the target name is sort of like the house number that the, each point has to have an individual and unique name inside of the group so typically that starts with p1 and so we'll just hit ok there and again to get back to that dialog just click in this gray box area right here for the instrument interface point naming dialog okay so the next thing that you will need to choose is the target that you're going to use um, to shoot your data um, so we have some presets that are here, and these are four quick select presets. Uh, but if you don't see the target that you'd like to use, you can very easily add it by just right clicking on any one of these icons and changing it um, to the um, target that you'd like to use. So let's change this one to a SMR one and a half inch, and you'll see that that one is one that we already had. If you don't see the target that you'd like to use in this list here, then you can easily go down to define new target and when you say when you hit define new target you'll see this dialog pop up which gives you the ability to create new targets in here so the first thing that you choose when you're going to define a new target is what type of reflector are you using and once you choose that reflector that you're going to use you will be able to add additional options so I'm just going to start with a one and a half inch uh, SMR here and then add from selected reflector now we have the standard options here that almost every instrument comes with as far as the laser tracker goes. 
and that is your pin nest, plain nest, and edge nest. And you'll notice that the pin nest is set for uh, an eighth inch um, additional radial offset, which makes this a quarter inch pin nest. So in a typical quarter inch pin nest, you're adding an extra quarter inch of a planar offset and an eighth inch of radial offset. Uh, the next one is plain nest and edge nest. So if I go ahead and select all three of those, we can add three new targets to our target list there. So I'll just hit OK. And you can see that these actually appear with an asterisk next to them because I've already created those uh, up here previously. So, but in order to use those, now all you have to do is just go back to this and right click here and select the target that you'd use. So let's go to make this one a pin nest. That is an, we have an edge nest. And then this one we'll set as a plain nest. So there's our four most commonly used targets right here. And so in order to um, take a point, the second thing that you need to look at is make sure you've selected the correct target. And then finally, the last thing that you want to do is select your uh, measurement profile. And the measurement profile is just basically the way that um, Spatial Analyzer is going to take data from the instrument. So the four most common types of measurement profiles are the single point, which when you press this, takes a single point in SA. Um, there's another one called stable point. And when you do that, it will begin waiting for you to move the SMR, and then it will wait for you to get stable. And then once you've gotten stable for the correct amount of time, it will um, take a point there. And this is a great feature to use if you're trying to shoot some points by yourself, rather than have to have someone else hit the measure button or even use an RF remote, um, you can simply use stable point, and as soon as you've gotten stable enough or long enough, uh, spatial analyzer will automatically trigger a point. The third one there is spatial scan. This is where if you want to take a stream of points, um, you can choose that measurement setting, and the spatial scan also has a stable start trigger, which basically means that um, it will wait for you to move, it will wait for you to get stable, um, and then it will begin measuring that stream as well. The fourth one is a tooling ball. And so if you select tooling ball, what SA will do is allow you to take several points around the outside of a tooling ball. And instead of returning all of those points to the job file, it will construct the sphere, um, find the center of that sphere, sphere, and then simply return the center point of the sphere. So you basically get one point um, from a tooling ball measurement instead of um, a dozen or more points that you would be taking around the outside of a tooling ball. So that can really save you time if you're um, tying into a tool that has a lot of tooling ba balls on it. You can just simply use the tooling ball um, measurement profile and SA will return just one single point at the center there. The next four icons here are custom measurement profiles, which you can set to any of the measurement profiles which you've already created. Um, and so if you right click on any one of those, you will get this dialog that allows you to, to uh, define those. Um, so some other popular ones are um, a precise point, uh, which may vary depending on what brand of tracker that you're using. Um, another one that you might be interested in is just um, what we call high point, which is, let me find it here, which is right here. And what high point will do is um, take a bunch of points while you're scanning, but then only return the point that is highest in the direction of your choosing. So if you want to scan a full plane and then find out which one of those points is the highest point in that plane based on X, Y, or Z magnitude, you can set that with high point as well. So then you've got two other options there you can set and any one of those you can customize to whatever your um, most used measurement profiles are. So once you've chosen the point name, you've chosen your target that you're going to measure and the measurement profile, you're ready to go ahead and start measuring.